We're going to talk about the bulk create in register tool inside right tool. Let's go into quick QuickBooks online. And we actually have a bank account here that has a blank balance. And we also have, we're going to go down here, a loan account just to show you. We have a loan account here that also has a blank balance as well. So what I want to show you is I'm going to show you first uh, bulk entering checks, expenses, deposits, that sort of thing. We're going to do this in this Chase 2222 account that currently has a zero balance. So I'm going to go into this spreadsheet and I'm going to show you, um, kind of set the premise here. Let's say I happen to have this amortization table. It has dates, it has the payment amount, it has the interest, the principal, and the balance. Okay, This stuff will take a very long time to do manually in QuickBooks. And I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to show you one, we're going to enter the checks first, and these are checks that are even dated in the future. So we're going to enter all the checks coming from the bank account to the loan at the whole amount. Not It won't have a split. It will just be the money, the whole amount that goes from the bank into the loan. So I'm going to copy these two columns. I really just need these two columns. I'm going to create a new one, and I'm just going to call this checks. I'm going to paste that data in there. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see exactly what's going on. And here we go, date, payment amount. Let's go back into the check register. I'm going to go into view register, and then we should have a button that says bulk enter. When I click on bulk enter, it's going to tell me what fields I need to have. I need to have a date, a reference number, a payee, an account, a memo, a payment, or a deposit. So I really only need these first six here. So I'm going to build this up in my current spreadsheet. So we're going to insert a new one, and we'll call this one a reference number, Okay, which we don't need anything for that. Then we're going to need payee account memo. So let's create three lines here, and then we have payee, then we have account, and then we have memo. And then the next one is called, well, the next one is the payment, the dollar amount, which is there. Per perfect. Okay. So now let's think about what we're going to put here. So for reference number, I'm just going to put here um, ACH. Uh, uh, we just call it ACH and that's it. We'll make it very simple. So let's say their, their reference number is going to be ACH. On their payee, it's going to cancel that. And let's see if we have a payee here for the Ford loan. And yeah, we have this thing called Ford finance. So we'll copy this, right? So it's just the vendor that's already in QuickBooks and you gotta be, make sure that you're, you have the vendors already in QuickBooks. You can't be creating vendors from this tool. Then we have the account, which should be the loan account. Okay. Which is this loan called for loan. So I'm going to copy this, go back into here, paste this into account. So now we have the date, reference number, payee, account, and then on the memo, we can do something like this. So I'm going to number, number these columns here on the side, click and drag that down. Okay, so now we have the numbers, and then I can put here, I can put loan payment, let's say, let's do a formula. So equals, quote, loan payment, space, quote, and percent, and then we'll put this in here, one, and then we'll do ampersand, quote, space, and type out of 60, end quote, enter. So I'm just using the magic of Excel to automate um, these things here, and then I can click and drag this down, and I have you know, a, a nice, really clean memo, the type of thing that you, that you normally would want, to, would want to see. So, all right, so let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so here's all my data. So we have date, reference number, payee, account, memo, and amount. Perfect. So we'll click and drag this down. There's a total of 60 payments or 60, 60 checks, 60 expenses that we're going to bulk enter into QuickBooks simply by having it in Excel first. So let's go into QuickBooks. I'm going to click on bulk enter. We're going to paste in here where it says paste or drop uh, CSV. Then we're going to verify that all these things make sense. They all seem to make sense. So beautiful. Then we're going to click here, it says bulk enter, and just click on that and wait.
So I'm not going to fast forward or anything like that. I'm just going to watch you. I'm, I'm going I'm to have you watch this whole thing live. So it's going to take a while because it's literally entering 60 transactions. But you see it right there on the screen. I'm not clicking on anything. It's right there on the screen. It's, 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 a, it's a robot. It's a little robot doing the work for you. And then we got down to 57,998. If I go back into my spreadsheet and I uh, click on the entire column, I should be able to verify with the Excel sum that it is in fact 57,998.43. So now we know for sure that all these uh, checks or um, expenses were in fact entered. If I come in here and I click on one of these and click on edit, we get to see each of the transactions in its full glory. We have payee, we have the source account, we have the date, we have the reference number, we have the category, and then we have uh, the memo that gets put here on the bottom. Okay, in, When you enter things from the register, it doesn't go into the description, it goes into the memo line down here. That's kind of how it functions. Okay, good. So we did that. So that was sort of, let's, let's call that the easy part. We bulk entered all the all the checks from the bank. And you didn't have to do that. You, you could have waited for the actual uh, checks or ACH payments to actually come out of the bank and via bank feed or whatever, enter them then. That's fine. I'm just illustrating that you can simply import uh, your expenses or checks all in one shot. So let's go into the other register. Let's go into the loan register now. So let's go find the loan. There we go. There we go. And now we see the ending balance for this loan is negative 7,998. Started with 50,000. And then we have all these payments that are 57,000. Obviously, you're going to end up with a negative balance. And the reason for that is because we haven't entered the interest charges, which we happen to have in a spreadsheet. So essentially, we're going to take this same style of spreadsheet uh, and then we're going to do a bulk enter. But now we're not doing the bulk enter in a bank account anymore. So it's going to be slightly different because we're actually bulk entering journal entries. So we're going to click here. It says bulk enter. So date, reference number, payee, account, memo, and then, uh, and then the payment. Okay, so let's bring that over here. Now we do need to change the account itself. That needs to be something else. So we're going to uh, come back here and click on the account drop down and type interest expense. Okay, so we do have an interest expense account. We're going to copy that because we need to have the actual name of the account in the spreadsheet. So we're going to replace this account with the interest expense account and we click and drag that down. So let's duplicate that. Perfect. And then on the loan payment, maybe uh, the memo, we could change this to maybe interest, interest uh, portion of payment, and then press enter. Okay. So now uh, our memo, maybe it's more conducive to like what the actual transaction is. Perfect. Okay. So now we need the payment amount. Okay. This is not going to work. So let's come out here and let's copy all the interest. So we'll replace the interest from the amortization table and bring it in here. And we'll let's just pay some values here. Uh, there you go. Perfect. Now just now we do want to make sure the formatting is a number formatting. Take out all the signs and things that could be confusing. Uh, for so it's just you know two digit number formatting. Let's copy that and let's come back and bulk enter. There we go. And we need to make sure that these header column here says amount and not payment and deposit, like I said before. So once it says amount, that should work. So we have all the pieces of information that we need. We'll click on bulk enter and then we'll let it do its thing. Now, I did notice that this thing is going in the opposite direction. So I'm going to click refresh here in a second so we can stop that from happening. And um, let me see if this is going in the right direction. Remember, the payments should be on one side. Interest payments should be on the other side. So those are, they don't seem to be on the right side where they're supposed to be. So my error here was that I bulk entered um, them as, as positive. In this case, I should bring them in as, as negative. And uh, that's how we'll make sense of this. So let's uh, bulk delete these things. Let's put here the word interest. So it only shows me uh, the ones that I've entered so far. Let's click on batch, select all, and then delete. Okay. 
Perfect. So we're back into this 7,998 mode, which is where we want to be. Let's go back into the spreadsheet over here and let's create a new, oops, not that. Let's create a new column and let's do the negative side of that number. So we'll do equals negative of this. Bring that down. Make sure that this is on number formatting. Perfect. Copy this over here. Okay, and we actually don't need these columns here, so that should now work. So let's grab this information. Copy that. Come back in here. Click on bulk enter. Paste. Perfect. We'll click on bulk enter. And now we're watching for this ending balance to end at zero. So in this perfect scenario, we entered all the payments and then we entered all the interest payments. So now when we go reconcile this loan account down to zero or reconcile it at whatever point in time that it has a balance, it should uh, work uh, perfectly. You got beginning balance, you got all the payments, and now you have all the interest coming in and zeroing out the account 100%. Look at that, that's just beautiful. So we're gonna reconcile, and then we'll reconcile, let's say this loan account we go reconcile it back when we first got it, which is in 0801-2023. Then click on Start Reconciling. There should be a single transaction there. Beautiful, that's reconciled. Okay, click on Finish Now. And let's assume that we are looking at this at any specific point in time. Let's say we're looking at this, for example, on the end of December, which should have a balance of 47111.87. So any point in time, we can come in and reconcile this. And I'm trying to have you imagine what this would look like in the real world when you're sort of doing this in real time, right? Because it's not very common that we would be um, uh, reconciling everything five years later. We would be reconciling things sort of in real time as things come in. And yeah, sometimes you could be off by a penny. That's that's common in the in in you know in uh, in rounding up and rounding down sort of a way so you could just quick, just change that to the penny or whatever and then you should be able to get very close and again if you didn't want to you know even reconcile that to the penny like that you could just grab your last transaction and then maybe you know bring this down 19 cents or bring it up a cent whatever will give you that zero so again not always going to be exact because it is going off a spreadsheet that's rounding up but this gives you a general idea of how you can use uh, the batch enter or the bulk enter in right tool to either bulk enter expenses or checks and then bulk enter something that belongs in a non-bank uh, account like a loan account or any sort of balance sheet account, you can bulk enter in there. So I hope that's helpful.